Am I the a-hole for spending my children's inheritance, leaving almost nothing to them and my grandchildren? What you are about to read is a recent cause of emotional distress for me, regret. And I'm doing this post with the help of my colleague and a son whom insists I'm doing the right thing. I'm 63 years old. I took advantage of better times, financially speaking, and managed to get enough money to save, have a good retirement, and leave a good inheritance for my children. However, their actions in recent years has broken my heart. My oldest daughter is a lawyer, married to an attorney. I have another son who is also a lawyer, a third one became an engineer, and the youngest, who is a salesman. I have been a smoker for many years, and a predictable outcome has finally caught me so I may not have many years left. After knowing this, my children began stabbing each other's backs, trying to get their inheritance earlier. Initially were frequent verbal discussions that escalated to legal battles. The boiling point came when my daughter forged her brother's signature to take their part of the inheritance while I was being treated at a hospital. Now, none of the siblings can see each other in the eye and only talk through lawyers. Saddened by the situation, decided to spend the money, thinking that if all of it is gone, they would have no more reasons to fight. I donated to charities, bought my wife beauty items, went on vacations with her paying for the better-looking hotel rooms, no planes because of COVID travel restrictions. Gave my grandkids expensive gifts, bought my dearest friends and colleague better equipments to improve their work. We bought a huge TV, prepaid for my funeral, tasted some fine whiskey, among other things. Right now, about 65-70% to 70 of my savings are now gone. I plan to keep enough for the time I have left and leave my wife a good cash amount. However, my children are noticing that I'm spending a lot and started to ask questions. My daughter figured out what happened on her own. I had no rebuttals, since I'm guilty of all the accusations she made. But then she mentioned that her children will suffer because of my selfish acts. Not only that, but I am cursing all of her grandchildren by doing this. That made me think that my grandchildren shouldn't be punished for their parents' sins. And maybe I was too self-absorbed to realize it sooner. That's my dilemma now. Now for the top comments. Not the a-hole. Hard not the a-hole. What did she accuse you of? Spending your money? That you earned? On a life you wanted? Inheritance is what you get when someone dies. It's not yours. You're not entitled to it. You don't get to dictate what happens until you actually inherit it. You can, until the day you die, change up who gets what. You got one kid who's not being a prick? Leave it to them. Or leave it to your grandkids in a trust their folks can't touch. You can roll it up and smoke it. It's yours. You've done nothing wrong. Heck, just leave it all to your wife. That's how it should go anyway. And I'm sorry you're at this point, man. The big C sucks, assuming that's what you meant. This, OP, the money's yours. You were never under any obligation to leave an inheritance. You've saved it for your entire life, and you get to spend it however you wish. No further conversation needed with your kids. Not day whole. Okay, but I do suspect OP is seriously underestimating the potential cost of his wife's elder care. That can be years or decades of mind-boggling expenses, especially if she has to hire someone to do the administrative piece of it because her kids are too backbiting and spiteful. OP, I'm sure your wife appreciates that you're making her final years with you pleasurable. But assuming she isn't facing the same relatively quick decline, from physically self-sufficient to dead that you presumably are, you owe her some degree of pragmatism too. Are you saying an attorney, lawyer, engineer, and a salesman can't provide for their children and have to rely on inheritance? Tell them it's your money, and ultimately you aren't responsible for their grandkids' future, and they should be saving up for them. Tell your kids to jog off and do one. It's because they are spending all their money on lawyers to squeeze blood from Iraq. These kids are ridiculous. OP is not the a-hole. Not the a-hole. When will kids learn that they are not entitled to any inheritance? This sense that you are owed money from your parents or grandparents is obscene. If people want to leave awesome to a loved one, that's fine. But no one is entitled to it. I received a large inheritance. I would give it all back to have my dad again. Next story. Am I the a-hole for telling my 18-year-old daughter she needs to get a job or go to college even though she has a toddler? I have two daughters. April, female 18, and Jade, female 15. I'm a single mom. April and Jade's dad and I got divorced around 13 years ago as he was having an affair. And he's never been in the picture for either of our girls after that. When April was 16, she unexpectedly got pregnant. 
I took her to counseling to help her organize her thoughts and figure out what she wanted to do. And April decided she wanted to keep the baby. The pregnancy and birth went smoothly, and now I have a grandson, Oli, male too. The father is involved, but he and April are no longer together. Oli stays with his dad every weekend, and the dad's parents give April money to go towards Oli's expenses. Earlier this year, April graduated high school. She's been taking care of Oli during the week, but other than that, she hasn't been up too much. She keeps saying she'll start looking for a job, but hasn't even started writing her resume. Besides taking care of Oli, she just sits at home watching TV. On multiple occasions, April has tried to leave Oli with Jade so that she can go out partying, which has led to huge arguments. Last week, I talked to April and I told her that she needs to get a job or go to a local community college, and that'll foot the bill for any childcare she needs for it to happen. I told her she needs to get a job or go to college in order to stay here. April got upset and said that she doesn't want a job or go to college. She said she just wants to be a mom. She told me it can wait until Ollie starts school. I told her no and that she needs to start something so that she can support herself and be an independent adult. April said I'm being unreasonable and that these things can wait until Ollie's in school full time. She said that I'm asking her to damage him and that he needs his mom. It's not that I don't want April and Ollie here. I love them both. I just think I'd be setting a bad precedent by allowing April to continue to stay with me with no job and no education in the making. Not day hole. Your daughter had a baby and needs to understand. Full stop. That she doesn't just get to be a mom. She's single and living at home with her own mother. She's being unreasonable, selfish and lazy to expect you to support her while she lazes around unemployed until her child gets to school age. Yep. What she really needs is a part-time job and part-time school. I hope he's offered to pay for all childcare is too generous in my opinion. If she's old enough to have a baby and decide to keep it, she's old enough to start contributing to the household and her own future. She needs to learn to take care of herself and her baby financially. And she's not going to learn that by staying home all day playing house under mommy's roof without having any real-world experience. Not day whole OP. Not day whole. Your daughter has a two-year-old child yet act like one herself. Teen pregnancy makes me so sad. Yep, she chose to keep this child so time for her to grow up and take responsibility for him. It doesn't matter what her friends are doing. Her childhood ended when she had a baby. Yep, that 16 and pregnant show really glamorized ruining your future and a chance of being famous for doing nothing. Not day hall. April needs to work to support herself. And she's just wasting time that could be used either to work herself up in a job or to get educated. I would tell her, sure, I'd love to sit around and watch TV all day too. But it's a good thing for you that I don't. Let me be clear, I'm not asking. You aren't unique. Single moms everywhere go to work to support their kids. Ollie will just be fine. Also, since you're acting like a child, I'm banning you from the TV. Also, Jade will be paid to babysit. If you can't afford her, then don't ask her. You need to own up to your responsibilities. This, Opie needs to start stepping in and advocating for her other daughter to not be taken advantage of as a free babysitter. Next story. Am I the a-hole for asking my pregnant girlfriend to pay for or replace my meal because she ate all of it? I'm 26 male, been with my girlfriend 29 female for going on two years. Before we ever met, she and her sister had been working on her being a surrogate for her sister and her sister's husband. Global things delay that. We talked about her agreement before we got together and now she's pregnant for them. She's staying with them for now, but she comes over to my place frequently to spend time with me when she's free. It's not so bad, but either she raids my kitchen or she complains nothing looks good and wanted me to keep some of her eventual cravings on hand. My parents came to visit me and asked me if I wanted them to pick anything up for me on their way. They had to pass one of my favorite restaurants to get here, so I said yes. They showed up. We visited with each other. I ate a little bit of what they bought me since I wasn't really hungry yet and put the rest in the fridge for dinner that night. My girlfriend wound up coming over for a bit after they left. She got hungry and wanted a snack and came out with a container I put my leftovers in and goes, Can I have some of this? I told her yes. She came back with a plate and she didn't take some of it. She took all of it and put all kinds of stuff on it, so we couldn't even share. I told her that I said she could have some, and she just ate all of what I intended to have for dinner. So I asked her to either send me money to pay for so I could go get some myself, 
or she could make the drive and get me another order. She didn't want to drive that far, and she didn't think she should have to pay me anything. I told her she should, because it would just be nice of her to do since I get she gets cravings. But it's not like she's pregnant with my kid or we live together. She left at that point, left half the food and eaten, and I wouldn't eat it because of what she put on it. A couple hours later, my mother called. My girlfriend texted her about what happened. My mom gave me an earful about how I have no idea what it's like for my girlfriend right now, and I need to be supportive and let things go. Now for the top comments. Not day whole, regardless of how special the meal was, or your willingness to share it, or how much it cost you, or whatever her condiments did to his palatability. She didn't think anything about taking your whole dinner and not replacing it. Then she used her pregnancy as the excuse. You don't live together, so I'm guessing you don't share expenses or grocery shopping. It's not the norm that all food is automatically shared food. People who fail to read your post will only see pregnant girlfriend and not girlfriend is a surrogate for a family member. That means you're not going to be raising a child together or any of the other reasons people will throw at you for their outrage. She took your food. You ask her to replace it or throw you some cash. That's reasonable. So wait. She's probably getting paid to be a surrogate or at the very least getting free room and board. And he is expected to pitch in on a situation by being her second pantry? For a pregnancy has nothing to do with. The snacks are innocent enough, but to just come and stuff your face with no remorse? Forget about it. Getting paid by her sister? I doubt that. She could be that generous and pure of heart to provide this out of kindness. But who voluntarily wrecks their body at not getting anything in return except for good vibes? Not the a-hole. And when you have a disagreement, your girlfriend calls your mom so she can scold you? Dump the girlfriend. Isn't it the most cringe to involve someone's parents in an argument when you're dating? Cringe enough when they involve their own parents. But involving the partner's parents is next level. I could take a wild guess that Opie's mom is overbearing and kinda bossy. So I picked the same kind of woman as a girlfriend, hence why they both walk all over him. But I'm just spitballing. Not the hole your girlfriend is. Being pregnant does not mean you can raid the fridge of a house you don't live in. She should ask prior to her fridge raiding and replace items when asked. Been pregnant, and it is not an excuse to be greedy or rude. Girlfriend definitely needs to pay OP. Not the hole Last story. Am I the a-hole for telling my husband I'd rather nobody use my holiday booking out of spite? My 23 female husband, 27 male, and I have been together for 5 years, married for 3. We're both athletic people, or at least I used to be, so we've been planning a holiday for the past year. Without going into major details, it's an expensive holiday by my standards, and it would have involved a lot of hiking. I was looking forward to it. I was in an accident recently and once again, without going into much detail as it's triggering, lost my leg. It's upsetting, but I'm not in a place to openly speak about it outside of therapy. Obviously, due to this recent restriction, I'm unable to do what we'd planned for our holiday. I hadn't thought about a holiday. It's non-refundable. I had expected my husband to not want to go. Currently, his family haven't asked once how I am. And my family claim it's hard to be around me because they don't know how to support me, whatever. Then yesterday, he said he invited his sister, 19, in my stead. I was baffled because I expected him to support me. He said it's not for two months. I'm like, so? Cancel. And plan something we can both do. He said he needs break. That he's been supporting me. He deserves this and he was also looking forward to it. So I said, you go. But I paid for my spot. So no. She can't use it. He asked if I'm being serious, that it's spiteful. His sister hasn't done anything. I said she hasn't asked me once how I'm doing. She texted me last week for 150 pounds. Why should she get a free holiday? Anyway, he's upset claiming he'll still go and pay for his sister, which he won't, since A, it's expensive, and B, last I checked, it's fully booked. Am I the a-hole? I'd ask family or friends, but I don't feel like texting them. Not the a-hole. Do you have travel insurance? Because your accident should allow you to claim the whole trip cost back, including your traveling companions. Even if you don't, an email and copy of a medical letter would trigger many hotels slash airlines to refund you even if this is outside their terms and conditions. Sending good wishes. Definitely try this if you haven't already. My mom had a flight voucher expiring with no options to extend. She emailed explaining she had to have surgery. 
and they extended it for a year, and she can use it for other locations. Yes, do this. Sometimes people surprise you. Explain your extreme circumstances, and I'm sure they could find a way to work with you. As a physiotherapist, I have worked with patients after amputations, some after accidents. It is such a distressing experience, and it is hard to count all the aspects of your life this impacts. Many young athletic people who lose limbs will enter a total identity crisis on top of the grief that comes with losing a limb, parts of your future, hiking, and all sorts of things. This is really, really hard to go through. Your husband should be there for you, and probably go to therapy himself to deal with his own feelings. We used to put children who lost limbs in the same training area as soldiers. This helped the children feel better and made them want to train, use their prosthetics, and the soldiers were amazing. You seem so alone in this, and I am so sorry for that. Now, some people mention your husband might be burned out. My boyfriend was severely depressed for about a year. Was it hard for me? Yes. Was it much harder for him? Yep. I stood by him, helped him, comforted him, and showed him how much I love him every day. It was worth it, and it makes me so happy to see him thrive now. Your husband needs to do better. Your husband should not go on that trip without you. Some might say that you could be the bigger person and be happy for him and his sister enjoying said trip, but you lost your leg. You are not, in any way, supposed to be the bigger person here. This is about you. You should be supported. You should feel loved and like the highest priority right now. Your feelings are so valid and the things you are going through are immensely hard. You are doing pretty awesome, I think, and I hope you get the help you need. It will get better, but it can take time and that is okay. Not the whole. You have experienced something very traumatic. Things should be about you at the moment.